Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to share with you our January project share. Now this video is going up a little bit early because, um, well, it's December and it's crazy here. And honestly, January is no better for me. It's a little less crazy because, you know, it's not Christmas or, you know, your traditional winter holidays. But my youngest daughter is turning five years old in January. So it's going to be a little crazy for me then too. Uh, so I, I'm getting this video up early for you guys. So you will have lots of time to... Um, get your projects made and into me. Uh, there is no specific deadline just by the end of January so I can have everyone's mouth back out. Um, and if you mail in super early, that's fine. Um, but just know that I will hold the projects try to try to like group people together. Um, that way I'm not making a video for one entry and then the next video I'm making a video for, you know, 15 entries because I kind of want to give everyone an equal um, time to look at everyone else's stuff. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, um, so on to the fun stuff. How many of you guys have thank you cards that you need to mail to your family or friends that you need to give to teachers or coworkers or whatever? And whether it's for the Christmas season or whether it's for just birthday gifts or whatever, Everybody needs thank you cards. Everybody needs greeting cards for one thing or another, whether it's Valentine's Day, birthdays, um, anniversary, celebrations, uh, congratulations, good job, promotion. I mean, everybody needs greeting cards, right? So my theory for the January was this was all based on the fact that I need to send out thank you cards. So I always make my cards. Um, even if I alter cards, I always put my own personal touch on cards. And that's where this came from. I wanted to kind of like throw my hat up, if you will, to uh, creating cards. So I wanted you guys to participate in that as well. This is a very, very open um challenge, share, thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, so over the winter holidays, a lot of people were calling them um, December challenges. Um, and sometimes it is a challenge because you've never done it before. And I want you guys to be challenged. I want you guys to do something out of your comfort zone. I want you guys to say, well, Bob can do it. So can I. Um, there are so many different levels of creativity that, uh, people send in to me and I want you guys to know that if you've never done it before there's never any time better than right now to try something new um, so try it and you never know you might fall in love with it and then you'll want to keep it <laughs> so anyway um, I made several different types of cards that I wanted to go over with you guys. So I'm going to go over these two first. And the reason that I wanted to go over these two first was because I used printables. I did not create the design for these envelopes. I used printables that I uh, purchased. And these printables came from Genevieve Designs. She does have a YouTube channel. She does have an Etsy shop. And she has a Facebook um, I think she might be on Instagram, but I don't know if she's active on Instagram. I know she's active on Facebook and I know she's active on YouTube. So anyway, um, these two came from her downloadable printable and this package is called the ultimate scrapbook guide and it, they're, there's no lying in that title. There's so much stuff that you could do with this principle. Um, and I just made greeting cards with it. So um, I used this card here or this envelope. And this one has a magnetic closure. I'll do one at a time. And the reason I'm showing you guys this is because there's several different ways for you to make a greeting card. And this is one. I printed off this template and on a double-sided paper. Now, I did mat the inside here and I did mat right here. The only reason I did that was because I was using a magnetic closure. So, I do have a mat right here and I do have a mat right here. 
But again, I have that magnetic closure right there. So I wanted to cover that up. Now, if you do not want a closure of any kind, then you don't have to mat it. If, especially if you use a double-sided paper, then it's perfect. Now, this was, ironically, this was a scrap. And what I did was I tore the edges kind of like asymmetrical and in no particular rhyme or reason. And then I inked the edges and then plastered it right on top. So I didn't do anything special to this envelope. All I did was print it out, fold it, and glue it. The only thing that's special about it that I did was I add a magnet and I add a piece of scrap right there. And then the inside is where you get the fun stuff. So you have your card itself, which is right here. Now you can use this for a card or you could use this for photo mats. Um, but w my intention was to make the card this and then use this as a photo mat to kind of send them a picture of, you know, the stuff that they sent me or, you know, something that I made with the items that they sent me. Um, so that's just an idea. So your card is right here and then you have an extra photo mat right here that you can add with it. So there's that one. And this one, I fell in love with this one. After I started playing with it, I just fell in love with it. So this is also a printable right here. This, all this is my paper. So the paper itself comes from either Kaiser Craft Frozen or Frosted. I think it's Frosted. Hold on, let me grab it. Um, of course, it's not going to be too handy because I buried it. All my paper is right beside me. It's frosted, not frozen. It's frosted. So um, there's that one. And oh, but all my paper is fairly handy, but it's like it sits like this on my bookshelf. So I have to look at this side right here to try to figure it out. And then this one is the ice crystals. So I kind of like went back and forth between the papers to um, find one find some that I liked to go with it. So anyway, all right, so this one was really cool. We went over this one, so I'm going to set it aside and I'll show you all again at the end. And all this is, is this is some ribbon that I got on sale at Michael's. And this is this ribbon right here. This one's closed, but I think it's that one. Uh, yeah. No, this one. It's a little bit thinner. So, that's the ribbon. So, anyway, um, when you guys go shopping and look at, like, clearance stuff, look at stuff like this that is very, very, very generic because this is Christmas ribbon, technically, but it's incredibly generic, and you can use it in so many different crafts. So anyway, this was a, a printable, and all I did was I used the paper, and I printed out, and so this was kind of like an extra piece that I had no idea what I was going to do with, and so all I did was I popped it up on foam, and it actually helps the closure. So as you guys noticed, when I first started, this was closed, and I untied it, and now it's open, and this is just a hole punched right here with an eyelet to kind of add that extra security. And this is your traditional clasp envelope. So, yeah, and I matted right here just because, you know, it was cool. And again, with your card and your photo mat. So this one is not curved. Uh, the other one I curved the edges. I rounded the edges, whatever. Uh, but this one I did not, I left it squared. And then your photo mat here. So there's that. Now, this is two examples of you completely creating your card and your envelope. Now, if you want to do that, fantastic. If you don't, that's okay too. I'll give you guys some ideas for something that's less intricate, we'll say that. Um, because I don't, I don't think that any of them are really complicated, I think they're intricate. They have different steps to them. So these are two examples of creating your card and your envelope completely from scratch. Okay. Now we will go with 
this one here, which is a, it is kind of an, an intricate step, but I think Sydney was playing with it. She was, because there's like a little piece right there that was folded inward. Okay, so this one is a little bit intricate, but at the same time, pretty simple. Now this came from, hold on, let me grab one out of my box. I um, I ship a lot, so I had gotten a box of these envelopes from Paper Mart. It, honestly, it was significantly cheaper than the Dollar Tree, because at the Dollar Tree you get six or eight for a dollar, and I got a box of 500 for like $20. So anyway, it started out to be a box, or not a box, an envelope. It started out to be an envelope, and what I did with this was I actually folded this to where the flap side here was shorter, yes, shorter, shorter than this side here, and I folded it in half. Then what I did was I cut this right here, I cut it off. That way, and I'm showing you backwards so you could see that this is a flap, but that way when it folds, the flap will go over the envelope. So that is all. Put that back in a minute. So that is this card. So it sits like this, just like you know any other carded or carded, any other envelope with a card. Okay. And so I do have a magnetic strip here, and if you notice the the washi on top. Thank you, Miss Tracy. Love it. So I had a, I had to do a shout out because I absolutely love this washi. It's so pretty. Um. So, um, anyway, this is the front and there, I actually kind of put lined paper on here for a reason. That way you could write on here. If you wanted to write straight, you can, and we're just going to flip it over and we're going to open it up. Now you can open it up this way or you can open it this way. It is laid out to open like this and you have your journaling spot and you have your photo spot. So again, if you wanted to add a picture of, you know, hey, this is Mary Sue playing with the toy that you sent me, thank you, blah, 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 you know, type of thing. Um, and then the same thing with this one here, you have your photo mat here and your journaling spot here. And then this is just kind of extras. If you wanted to put pictures here, you could. If you wanted to journal here, you could. Um, and I say journal very loosely. I'm not necessarily talking about journaling per se as much as notating, hey, thank you for, you know, this, that, and another. So this was an example of a repurpose. So we had an envelope and then we created a card and an envelope with that. Now with these, I also used a printable. You don't have to, you can, um, you can map this very simply, but because of this right here, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever tried to map this flap. It's kind of a pain in the tushy. So I did use the printable and this also came from Genevieve Designs and that's the six by nine envelope printable. There, it's actually for you to create a six by nine envelope, but there's no reason for me to do that because I have a box of them. So. Uh, this is also a repurpose, but is a much simpler repurpose. So these envelopes and cards were actually on clearance way before Christmas season. Um, these went on clearance. When did these go on clearance? I want to say in October, maybe. Somebody who knows, let me know. Help me out here. So what these are, uh, I don't know if I can even open that. Uh, let's see. I'll get my scrap bag here. So this is my little folder that I keep like extra pieces in. Oh, and by the way, all of these pieces, all of these, with the exception of these, not these, everything else was created using scraps. So these cards right here, the ones that have the letters on them and the envelopes that match them. So there's different colors and different letters. That's where that came from. Okay, 
I'm going to have to put that back in a minute because it's not coming back on the shelf. Because it's a little tall for my shelf, so I have to bend the plastic. So anyway, all of these came from scraps. Well, the papers themselves anyway. Uh, the decorative paper, not the cardstock. So anyway, what I did here was I just, I laid this down and I cut it just shy. Like I pushed it all the way over and I cut it just shy of the gold and same with the top and bottom. And then I used a circle punch and I punched the corners. Um, I used this punch right here, it's one inch punch. And basically what I did was, I'm not going to punch this because I want to keep this, but I just basically pushed it in here and punched it like that and then when you do it cuts the uh it cuts a circle out well a part of a circle out and you end up with that so the inside of the card is blank and for this i actually deconstructed one of these my daughter was playing with them so i actually deconstructed one of these envelopes and i cut it to bits and pieces and now i have mats for the envelope so this right here will map perfectly right here so I cut I traced this out of my decorative paper and I put it down right here and I, now I have a mat for this envelope same thing with the triangles the lids and the same thing with the back and the front so that's how I matted this um, you could if you really wanted to try to measure it and do that but these this right here is why I decided to do that because matting these triangle pieces is a pain in the tush it's hard so anyway that's what all these come from um, this right here mats the sides and you can see it with the gray and all I did and you can see it right here this is the envelope I tore it apart and then I cut with these it was pretty easy because there's that gold trim so all I did was I cut the gold trim off and I made it you know however much the measurement that is smaller than the actual image so it was fairly easy as far as getting it to be a little bit smaller than the actual one um, so that's the repurpose um, if you want to do that that'll take a little bit more time but once you do it once if you have a lot of these I think they came in like packages of like 15 or 12 or something like that so if you have a lot of them then to me I think it's worth deconstructing one so you have it for the rest of them so anyway that was this card here and I think that that turned out really cute oh and by the way with this one yellow with this one and this one, I used Velcro. And I kind of actually highlighted the Velcro on this one. Um, I don't know really what I was thinking, but I don't know, I thought it was cute. Uh, so I just punched out an inch and a half scallop and then a an inch circle within the scallop to put the Velcro down. Now you don't have to do the, um, the, the hole in the middle. I just did because, well, I don't know why because. Uh, you could just put a scallop there and then put the Velcro right in the middle. Or whatever um so there's that one and I did the same thing with this one not not the highlighting but the velcro part uh, so this one and this one are both velcro this one is magnetic and then this one is a hole with a tie now the last card that I wanted to go over with you guys is the simplest in design and what I mean by that is this is a craft card and envelope this came from the these it's the upside down it's the value pack cards and envelopes there's 25 uh, sets so you have the cards and the envelopes and that's it um, and you can use various sizes or whatever so with this what I did was took the corners and I rounded the corners all four corners and then I took a cut apart from our cards this is I'm not mistaken Cartabella um, and now I've, I put the other piece or the other books on top of it so I'm just like oh yeah it's from Cartabella again upside down 
called Christmas Time. I don't know how old this set is. Uh, I got this from Amazon or scrapbook.com. I really get all those orders mixed up. But it's called Christmas Time from Cartabella. And these little guys are really cool because you've got in most of your cart or most of your um, paper packs. Nah, um, the Recollections does sometimes, but a lot of your Christmas packs will, are Christmas packs, a lot of your paper packs will have these cut apart pieces. So I just used two of them. Used one from this one and one from another one. And put that back. All right, I'll put that back in a minute. And I put one here and I inked the edges of both the card and the cut apart. And I did the same thing here. I inked the edges of both the envelope both the inside and the outside, and the cut apart. Now with this cut apart, I had to cut down a little bit. This was a little large, but it went from this size to that size. And I was just like, well, <laughs> that's not gonna work. So I did just cut it down a little bit. And for this effect right here, I did the same thing with the corners as I did with the other card. And it was, um, to use that, that scallop circle. And I just put the corner into the punch and punched the corner out, basically. And I did that with all four corners, and that was it. Um, oh, I did put some of the corresponding stickers on this side. Uh, again, you don't have to do that, but you can. So this is probably the most simplest in design. It still took a minute just because uh, you have to punch all the edges, you have to ink all the edges and whatnot. But if you don't have a lot of materials, then I would say this is probably your best bet. Now, the only thing with this is, is I do want whatever it is you guys send in, whether it's a birthday card, a thank you card, a congratulations card, a, a generic card, just it's pretty, but there's no real purpose to it, so people could use it whenever they wanted to. Um, that would honestly be the best idea, but you can you can do whatever you want. You, if you want to do a birthday card, do a birthday card. If you don't, then don't do whatever you want. The only stipulation with any of this is you have to do something with the card and the envelope. So... If you want to make the envelope pretty by doing washi stickers, cards, papers, uh, bows, ribbons, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you want to create um, an envelope box to go with your card because your card's a little, you know, bulky or 3DE, like um, if this were the card, this is not the card, this is the envelope. But if this were the card, then I would make a box to put the card in. Um, but fortunately, this is the envelope, not the box. So, um, yeah, so you guys need to create both a card and an envelope, not just the card. Uh, the envelope can be of various styles and different designs, whatever. Same thing with the card. There is no stipulation on what you design, no stipulation on what you create, uh, no stipulation on how large or small. I mean, kind of be reasonable. Don't send me like a 12 by 12 card because that's, I mean, as much as that would be really cool, um, someone else has to pay for the postage to get that to them. So don't do that. Um, but as far as like the cards, you, you want to make a mini card. That's great. If you wanted to make a larger card like this one, this one's a larger card, uh, believe it or not. Um, it is a six by nine technically card because it unfolds. Um, but yeah, so I think I've rambled enough. And I think I've given you guys a ton of ideas as far as different kinds of ways to go about doing this. Um, so yeah, I, I really hope you guys enjoy this process. I really get, I really want you guys to enjoy this process and I really want you guys to like just take a giant just leap of creativity into this because like I said, I thought about this because I needed some create thank you cards. Um, but then I was just like going a step further and it was just like, everybody needs cards for one reason or another. So let's make cards. Um, but yeah, there is no stipulation on what kind stamps, stickers, washi paper, uh, flowers. I use silk flowers a lot or paper flowers, uh, either or, um, so yeah, no stipulation on what you guys do to the cards. 
be creative, be out there, be crazy, and then send it all to me <laughs> and I'll pass it all around. Um, so yeah, enjoy it and have fun with it, guys. Have a blast. And I really can't wait to see what you guys send me. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I, I really, really am looking forward to this one. So thank you guys so much for watching. And um, don't forget to send a self-addressed stamped envelope. Uh, for December's project share, I had quite a few that did not send me an ad a self-addressed stamped envelope. So just make sure that you remember that. And also too, on the return address, make sure that you put your own return address, not mine. Because I did have um, some of the projects come back to me because there wasn't enough postage on it. Make sure that you put your return address. That way, if it's returned to sender because there's not enough postage, it still goes to you. Um, and you'll just have to pay the additional postage when you, when you go to pick it up. Um, but that way it's not lost in the mail. It's not coming to me and going back to you coming to me. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, make sure that when you put your address on it, you also put your address on the return address portion. Um, so yeah, that's it. I think I covered everything in this ridiculously long video. It's 40 minutes long right now. Um, unfortunately I don't have a whole heck of a lot to edit out of it, but, um, I really hope you guys liked it. Uh, we had lots of information in this one and yeah, I can't wait. So thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time. Bye guys.